In this lesson, we will get back to the chair scene and try to light the scene using a combination of an area light and a dome light. Let's open up the render view and start IPR. Hey folks, welcome to Mograph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, Redshift Masterclass, your complete guide to Redshift for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 19 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Redshift for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. I'm gonna change the scaling mode in the render view to fit window so the render resolution can change depending on the size of the render view window. You notice even though there are no lights in the scene, the scene is lit and we can see the geometries. And that is the default light of Redshift which is enabled by default. And as soon as we add a light source, the default light will be ignored. Now to turn off the default light manually, open up the render settings window. Come down to Redshift, change the mode to advanced and then come over to the global tab. Then come down to the option section and disable default light. Now if I refresh the IPR using this refresh button up here, we get a completely dark scene with absolutely no light. Let's close the render settings window. Now let's start the lighting. First, let's add a rectangular area light. So I'm gonna choose the RS camera in the render view and lock it. Now we can get out of the camera and place the light the way we want while still rendering our main camera in the render view. Now let's just move the light up a bit. Rotate it negative 90 degrees on Y and place it on the left side of the chair. To place the light a bit more accurately, I have created this null and rename it to light placement helper. So let's put the light under that null and zero out the position and rotation values. Now the light is placed exactly where I want so I can get it out of the null. Now set the intensity to one and exposure to 4.5. Next, I like the shadows to be a bit sharper and to achieve that, we can simply lower the size of the light. I'm gonna change the size from 200 by 200 to maybe 160 by 160. You notice how the way we place the light to the very side of the chair allows us to see this nice shadow fall off on the chair and helps us define the shape of the subject for the viewer. Uh, this is a fairly dramatic lighting and we can leave it as is, but let's make it softer and treat it more like a product photography shot. To do that, I like to add an overall fill light to make the shadows a bit brighter and lower the contrast of the composition. And to do that, let's use a dome light. So let's add one to the scene. Load this HDR image called bathroom and change its color space to linear sRGB because we are in ACES. Now you notice how this HDRI adds a lot of realism to the lighting, but as we are aiming for a product shot, I like to keep the colors as neutral as possible. Uh, this current angle, even though it's nice, but adds too much warmth to the shot. To see the HDRI, we can temporarily hide the wall geometry. Now we can rotate the HDRI to see it in the background. For now, let me unhide the wall. Uh, we can rotate it until we get something nice and neutral. I would say around negative 165 degrees. Get us a nice angle that fills a lot of those dark shadows. Now we can lower the intensity to around 0.5. It looks nice. Maybe later on we can have two renders, one with the dome light at its default and all the warmth and colors it added and this one which is more neutral. Now I can turn the HDRI on and off so you can see the difference it makes. Let me just have that more warm and real life render with the HDRI being at its default stage as well. 
I'm gonna first rename this one to dome light zero one neutral. Create a copy of it and rename it to dome light zero two warm. I'm gonna disable the previous one for now. I'm gonna set the intensity to one and zero out the rotation. And this gives us this nice warm render as well. Now let's go for the final render. So I'm gonna open up the render settings and change the mode to basic, increase the quality to high, enable the noising, choose uh, OIDN, which is Intel Open Image Denoise as the denoiser engine. It does a pretty good job compared to the other engines and it is fairly fast. Now we can take two renders, one with the neutral dome light and one with the warm dome light. For now, let's have the warm dome light enabled. And we can start a final render in the render view and wait for the result. It took around three minutes for this render. Before saving it out, we can do some basic color correction right in the render view. So open up the display panel, come down to the color correction section and enable it. Now use the curve to add a bit of contrast to the render. Now we can save the render out from the file menu to PNG or JPEG. I have already saved out both of the renders. Here they are. Great, so in this lesson we learned how to use an area light and a dome light to light and render a scene. See you in the next one.